Get ready to roll, Axel. We're gonna go find Magnus. Let's do this. Olivia, you stay here with Lucas and get the place ready for when Petra comes back, okay? <sighs> Fine. But I'm only doing this for Petra. I'll take it. Uh, guys? Please hurry. alive at any point in the past six years, you know about Minecraft. If you don't play it yourself, you at least know someone who does. I'm not the biggest Minecraft fan out there. I play it sometimes, but only in creative mode. I only enjoy building fortresses. Somewhat more obscure than Minecraft is the video game company Telltale Games. They're a company known for making games that rely very heavily on story, to the point that their games contain little real gameplay. Usually they take an existing franchise and turn it into one of their interactive stories. They've done games about Batman, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Borderlands, to name a few. This brings us to today's game, Minecraft Story Mode, aka what happens when Mojang teams up with Telltale to insert a story into a game that never really had one. And... Despite the fact that doing something like that sounds pretty absurd, the end result is surprisingly enjoyable. You play as Jesse, an inhabitant of the Minecraft universe. You can choose from six different skins for the character, three male and three female. I chose the tan-skinned male for my playthrough. Jesse and friends Olivia, Axel, and Reuben live in a treehouse in the middle of a forest. They're about to set out for a convention in their zone called Endercon. They enter a contest to build a creation of their choice. The team with the winning creation will get to meet Gabriel the Warrior, a legendary hero. A series of strange events causes Jesse to cross paths with Petra, another friend of his. Petra has Jesse accompany her to a meeting with a strange man, the goal to exchange a weather skull for a diamond. But the man betrays Petra, forcing Jesse and company to track him down. They pursue him into the central dome where Endercon is being held, only for their quarry to unleash a powerful wither which grows into a Lovecraftian monster known as a Wither Storm. And now, it's up to our heroes to stop the Wither Storm before it destroys the entire world. As the title of the game implies, the story is very central to the game. And as I already pointed out, Minecraft is not exactly known for being story-driven. Yet, somehow, Telltale Games pulled it off. The characters are interesting, the threat of the Wither Storm is very real, and the plot is fantastic. You always want to know what's going to happen next. The characters are all very memorable, and their voice actors do a really good job. The unique personalities and portrayals mean you'll get to know each of these people pretty well, and you won't be forgetting them anytime soon. Special mention goes to Patton Oswalt, the voice of male Jesse. 
His performance really helps bring the protagonist to life. I would give the same mention to Catherine Tabor, who voices female Jesse, but I didn't play female Jesse. What you looking at? Nothing. Whatever. Axel? I was just trying to figure out where Petra might be. I mean, I know she's going to be fine, but I was just curious. We're going to find her. Well, since the game uses Minecraft assets, naturally, the graphics shouldn't surprise you. Everything is a block with straight edges, 90 degree angles, etc. However, there are some key differences between this game and Minecraft proper. For instance, the characters have fairly detailed faces considering the limitations and even animations. They're capable of portraying emotion. Compare this with Steve question mark who has an empty blank stare the whole time. In addition, some characters such as Petra and Axel, were a bit bigger than Minecraft allows player characters to be without mods. Spend enough time in the game and you'll notice just how much effort Telltale put into designing the game's environments. Each of these worlds is a work of art. The attention to detail is astounding. Just look at some of these levels. They're nothing short of eye candy. I know that there are plenty of Minecraft builders out there who will look at these and scoff, but for the rest of us, the artistic competence required to make stuff like this, not to mention patience, is sadly out of our reach. I do have one minor complaint about the presentation. I ran into a few minor glitches here and there. Nothing game-breaking, just little things. Once in a while, I'd encounter sound issues in which characters wouldn't talk at the same time their mouths moved, or there would be no sound at all for a few seconds. It was nothing big, but worth noting. Here's the thing about Telltale Games... Games. They're extremely story-heavy and contain very little actual gameplay. Most of the time you're watching cutscenes. There will be times when you're asked to make a dialogue choice, which will have minor effects on the outcome, but for the most part, you're watching a movie. Now, there are occasional bits of true gameplay, most of which consist of Jesse walking around to find things to interact with. During these brief moments, the game becomes a point-and-click adventure, although these rarely last very long. Being Minecraft, there are times that you'll need to use a crafting table to make a certain item. The recipes are always given to you, so you don't need to fret too much. Just arrange the materials you have in the order indicated by the recipe, and you'll make the item you need to advance the story. During major plot events, there will be a bunch of quick time events. None of them are hard. You will be able to get all of them if your hands are on the controller. It's possible to fail one or two and not die, depending on the particular QTE in question. Finally, there are occasional, brief, and extremely easy moments of combat. Just mash the L2 button and you'll be fine. For something that sounds as if it shouldn't work at all, I found the game to be highly enjoyable. Although the Minecraft world hardly needs to worry about being brought to life, Telltale Games has made something worth your time and effort. Just in case my words don't sell you on the game, the first chapter is available for free on the PlayStation Store, so give it a try and see what you think. Also, this is the first game I got a platinum trophy for. Eight out of ten.
Minecraft Story Mode Season 2's first episode is now available. I haven't played it yet, but it's on my to-do list. I have a huge backlog of games I'm still waiting to play. Uh, so many games, so little time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Lords of the PlayStation.